Hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be continuing the Extra History series on the South Sea Bubble. This has been really interesting. Last episode was very intriguing. I liked seeing the king get mixed up in this financial institution that is essentially helping the government stay afloat. It's really meshing these two things that you really wouldn't expect to be meshed in the way that they are meshed. Like I, I could see the king having like s uh, somebody in that place, like when he has his son in that place, that makes all the sense in the world. That doesn't seem like something that a monarch wouldn't do, but when he puts himself in there, that's so interesting. I'm wondering if we're going to get anything practical in the running of this company, or if it's all just going to be financial... What's a, a word? I need a word. Shenanigans. Is it all going to be financial shenanigans? Because it doesn't seem like they've done anything in the South Sea. This is all just kind of artificial. They're just kind of playing around with money and the idea of money, and that I think is why this is really cool to do after the history of paper money. It's frustrating. You know all of this is going to kind of blow up in their face, but you're not sure exactly when unless you do, in which case good for you. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I know we have three more episodes, including this one. So let's get it started. Last time we left off, John Blunt had just found a new way for the South Sea Company to make money. And since the company still wasn't making a single cent in the South Sea, it was time for him to roll the dice on perhaps one of the most ambitious financial schemes in history. He was going to take on the now impossibly large 31 million pound unconsolidated debt that the government had racked up by 1719. If successful, this would, beyond any doubt, make the eight-year-old South Sea Company the biggest financial institution in the world. It would also make oh, anybody easily. associated with the South Sea Company wealthy on a scale we can't even comprehend today. We covered this a bit last time, but just to refresh, the scheme was this. The government would allow the South Sea Company to issue an amount of stock equal to the value of the debt. How much stock that was would be calculated off whatever the share price was at the time the law was passed. So, for example, if the government's debt had been £10,000 and the South Sea Company stock had been worth £10 a share, they'd have been allowed to issue 1,000 new shares of stock. £10,000 of government debt, £10,000 worth of stock. The South Sea Company would then offer debt holders the opportunity to exchange their government debt for that stock, which would have seemed like a pretty good deal to those debt holders at the time, given how successful the South Sea Company appeared. The catch was that the South Sea Company would offer debt holders to exchange their debt for the current value of the stock. This means that if the price of South Sea stock continued to rise, they wouldn't have to trade as much stock for the debt as the government had calculated, allowing them to sell off the rest of the stock at market value and just keep the profit for themselves. So say those hypothetical- So I'm glad they're doing a recap because I think it's connecting more now than it did in previous episodes. I think they had to explain it a few times just to make sure that I understood. I gotta see plus in economics. Um, so whenever I talk about economics, just remember this guy got a C plus in his last economics class. So take my words with a grain of salt, but I think it's finally starting to come together a little bit more. Like I thought I understood it last time. I feel like I'm more certain about it this time. So that's good. Like three explanations is a charm. Like why not? 10 pound shares happened to increase in value to 20 pounds each. The company would only have to sell 500 of their new 1,000 shares to cover the government debt now, after which they could just pocket the extra money they made selling off the rest. That's a pretty good scheme, and with a staggering 31 million pounds of debt on the market, the possibilities here are ludicrous. If they could even manage to raise their share price by a single pound, it could possibly net them a return on a scale of hundreds of thousands of pounds. Today, the equivalent value would easily be somewhere in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. But before they could rake in the money with such a scheme, they needed to convince the government to let them consolidate the debt. And by convince, I mostly mean bribe. With so much potential profit at stake, the size of those bribes were set to match, with individual members of parliament receiving upwards of a million dollars in today's money for their vote. But when... Dude. <laughs> in America... 
there was kind of this broad idea that America was this hopeful new land. Like, this is before uh, breaking off. Like, uh, the English Americans thought, hey, we are uncorrupted versions of, like, the British. We, we, like, the old country, it's, we, we have those rights that we inherited from them, but, like, they are so corrupt over there. And honestly... I get what they mean. <laughs> this is the the mess of financial institutions, especially coming from a good old agrarian Americans. Oh my God, Thomas Jefferson must have been driven crazy reading about this stuff. Uh, I I could only imagine, like, because that guy didn't even like banks. This is messy. The then Chancellor of the Exchequer, John Aislaby, presented it to Parliament. Parliament just sat there silent. The proposal was nearly too ludicrous for anybody who hadn't been generously bribed to take in. But, inevitably, when they recovered from the shock of the proposal, rather than reject it outright, they simply started to debate whether the debt should go to John Blunt's South Sea Company, or perhaps instead to the Bank of England. As these were both Whig-controlled institutions at this point, it was really just a matter of getting the best deal. For some, that meant the best deal for the government, and for others, it was the best deal for them, personally. As this wrangling was occurring, Blunt thought up an even better way of incentivizing members of Parliament to see his way. Instead of straight up bribing people, which was A, far more dangerous to do, B, sometimes required cash up front, and C, didn't give them any long-term benefit, Blunt struck mm. on the idea of selling MPs stock, with the special caveat that they only had to pay for the stock upon its sale. This required no cash from the South Sea Company, was arguably legal if you wildly stretch your interpretation of the law, and meant that the arguably. MPs only made money if South Sea stock rose, which would hopefully keep them interested in seeing it continue to rise. Even more beneficial, as these new high-ranking officials were seen publicly buying into the South Sea Company, it convinced a number of other officials and members of Parliament to actually buy in as well. There was only one last point of opposition to overcome, and that was Robert Walpole, a man Blunt had previously gotten locked up. Walpole wanted to have the government set the price at which shares could be exchanged for debt, regardless of their eventual market value. This would have completely destroyed the profit potential of Blunt's whole scheme. Blunt's manipulation of the House of Commons won out in the end, though, and the deal ultimately went through with slightly more favorable terms for the government and the South Sea Company paying a few million pounds for the privilege. The South Sea Company got the right to consolidate the remaining unconsolidated government debt. Walpole didn't totally lose out, though. I'm looking forward to the conversation when we find out exactly how this goes down, because now we have, like, a moment, a breaking moment, a moment of alternate history, I guess, where we can imagine, like, if it went the other direction. So I guess I have to know where things are going to go from here before I can really think about, like, be all Captain Hindsight about things. But this is this is an interesting little... It, we're, we are literally halfway through the entire South Sea Bubble series, so this is, like, a perfect point to start to create kind of a crossroads. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the pacing. Sometimes I like to admire uh, the pacing of these series. Sometimes they just nail it. Behind the scenes, even he had been picking up cheap government debt in anticipation of the share swap. He wasn't going to let something hmm. petty like getting locked up in the Tower of London keep him from making a little money out of this. Oh, but Throughout this process, everything was coming up roses for Blunt and the South Sea Company. By March, the share price had risen to 330 pounds. By April, though, the company's share price began to slide, and Blunt couldn't have that. After all, the company's only source of revenue was an increasing share price, so he stepped in with yet another ingenious scheme. He offered to sell the stock in the same way you might a used car. 20% down and regular payments on the remainder every two hmm. months, which allowed people to buy far more stock than they could actually afford. Oh, Unlike no. a used car, though, the stock price could go up, and so long as it did, all people had to do was sell their purchased stock every two months, and they could cover their initial purchase and keep the profit. This resulted in many people owning five times as much South Sea stock as they could actually pay for. And when they did profit... Uh, and this keeps on introducing new elements that would make this less stable. So, and, and it makes me think, like, the next thing is going to take them down, but it doesn't seem like this is what's going to do it. Just just given the pacing of the series so far, it seems like there's so much 
more time and that it, it would be early for just this alone I, obviously when it comes to like financial institutions falling apart usually it's a collection of things so i'd imagine this is going to come into play later but it i'm getting the vibe that this is going to work out for a minute much as blunt expected many of them simply reinvested whatever they made to do it all again in the next two months this oh, helped push the price of South Sea stock even higher. And by the time the Royal Seal was on the debt swap agreement, the share price had risen to a ludicrous 550 pounds. Now, technically, this agreement, the South Sea Act, explicitly forbid Blunt from selling more stock until the company began to trade its stock for debt. But since most of Parliament and the King himself were making a killing, nobody seemed to remember this clause at the time. As the weeks wore on, though, despite all of these shenanigans, the share price began to waver. So Mr. Blunt proposed to the board of the South Sea Company yet another novel plan. Oh, no. Why don't we use all this profit we've made to lend money to people wanting to buy South Sea stock? They were going to offer loans oh, no. of up to £3,000 to individuals looking to buy into the South Sea Company. This is getting really close to the point of paying people to buy their stock. But it had the desired effect, and the stock continued to rise. Seeing the meteoric rise of the South Sea Company, everybody wanted to get into the stock market game. Companies all over Britain began selling stock to raise capital. Some of these were legitimate enterprises, which were established to develop sections of the British economy that hadn't taken off yet, simply due to lack of capital. Others, others offered such exciting products as a device to draw the vapors out of human brains, or a flying machine to be developed in the near future. But as Blunt finally began to actually convert the government debt I mean, as far as flying machines go, we, we've got a little time before the hot air balloon. We've, we've got a little bit of time to wait, and it, it's not, it's not going to happen here. So that one is either a scam or just failed science. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe the person genuinely believed they could build a flying machine. I, that is kind of interesting, though, the idea that popularly people would have been interested in the idea of a flying machine. And that's not ludicrous enough that, that like, people would be willing to invest in that sort of thing. It, it like, seemed realistic enough that enough people must have invested in or, with him to use this as an example. I'd imagine it would have to be something. I don't think he would do an example that nobody invested in. To South Sea Stock, the government, probably at the behest of Blunt and crew, began to crack down on these new ventures. You see, if money was being invested in these other new ventures, it meant there was less money to invest in the South Sea Company. That's the staggering scale that South Sea is at by this point. They have to worry that there is not enough money in the entire country to support their share price and have other companies on the market. So, in a feat of unfathomable irony, to defend the profitability of the South Sea Company, the government began to close down those other startups for unwarrantable practices. Unfortunately, this had the opposite effect that Blunt desired. As these other companies failed, the people who invested in them lost a great deal of money and began to sell their South Sea stock in order to cover their debts. Oh, but for yeah. right now, the stock was still on the rise overall. And with no rivals on the market and a fresh injection of loans from Blunt, South Sea shares skyrocketed from £503 to £830 apiece over the course of a week. Yet all was not actually well for South Sea. Between Doesn't the copious well. bribes, the annuity payments, the loans, and the dividends, South Sea had spent over eight and a half million pounds over a handful of months. And because many people were only paying 20% of their share price for their shares now, the company had little in reserve. Despite the shaky state of things behind the scenes, Blunt was given a knighthood in June and made a baronet, <laughs> and the South Sea company made plans. Oh yeah, they mentioned that. Like, I, knighthood is something, like, foreign to me. I, I know, like... The only knights I can think of are, like, celebrities. I, I, I know there's probably way more to that, and there's a lot of really important people or whatever, but I, I know, like, a handful of, like... I, when I think of, like, knighthood, I, th I think of, like... Like, wasn't the Beatle... Weren't, like, at least one of the Beatles, like, knighted? Or, like, uh, Patrick Stewart, wasn't he knighted? Like, it, it's... It feels like kind of a novelty to me right now, but like that, that's got to mean something. Plans to move to opulent new offices down the street from its old rival, the Bank of England. Soon the company would be valued at close to 300 million pounds, 10 Dude. times the amount of government debt they were originally supposed to take on. 
And due to the loans and the low money down share price offers, they would be owed about 60 million pounds, more than the total amount of money in the economy of Britain. Just to put this in perspective, if a company had that ratio of valuation to national economy in the modern day US, it would be worth 85 trillion dollars. Apple, the highest valued company in the world right now, is sitting at about two thirds of one trillion. And they actually make money. As you might have guessed, the center cannot- Is that, does that hold up now? I, I'd imagine like Amazon has to be above that by now, but I, I don't know, this, this was, made like they were referencing the uh the 2008 financial crisis at the beginning of this so this must this is one of their older series so i wouldn't expect those numbers to hold up now not hold this type of fanciful madness can only be sustained for so long and even as the company is reaching its peak people are beginning to realize just how out of kilter things really are Join us next time to watch the bubble burst and to yes. see the consequences for our reputable Mr. Blunt and all the other players. Okay, just in time for the bubble to burst. I'm very excited about that part. We got two episodes left, so the next will be the bubble bursting, and I'd imagine, uh, it, like, this story, like, it's kind of, it's interesting because we have the ones that follow more individuals, uh, and, uh, we have some that follow closer to events. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a gray area between the two, but where is like the, the big focus and a lot of this, like, it feels like, I, I, I'm not sure where it falls in this. This, this is, de this is definitely a, a strong combination of the two of like with the Sengoku, not the Sengoku Jidai, with like the Admiral Yi thing, I felt like I got a very strong grasp on like the individual, but not as good of a grasp on like the broader sense of things. This one, I think it balances that a little bit better than a lot of the previous ones did. And I think that's really, I think this one came like a little before or, or a little after the Admiral Yi one. Or maybe it was a little closer to the Sengoku Jedi one, I'm not sure. I, I think it was actually the Sengoku Jedi one. That, that one I believe was early. So it, I believe it came like shortly after that. All right, I, I, I'm gonna have to learn how the continuity of these things go because I know they have like newer people now than they did when they started and stuff. And I'm gonna have to learn a little bit more about how this channel has uh, has worked over the years. I'm sure I'm gonna end up getting plenty of the story. Um, so I enjoyed this one. Uh, remember guys, participate in the poll on the community tab to help me determine which series I'm gonna be doing next. We got two more of these babies. Very excited. Should be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right.